Let us pray. Teach us thy way, O Lord, and lead us in thy truth, and unite our hearts to fear your name. And let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's word for us this morning is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 11. The hand of Yahweh was upon me, and he led me out by the spirit of Yahweh and put me down in the middle of the valley. And it was full of bones. And he led me around among them, round and round. And oh, they were very many on the floor of the valley. And oh, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of Adam, can these bones live? Isaiah said to him, my Lord Yahweh, you know. And he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says my Lord Yahweh to these bones, see, I will cause breath to come into you and you shall come to life. And I will, put my, I will put sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to grow upon you, and, I, and upon you I will, and I will cause flesh to grow upon you, and I will cover you with skin, and I will put breath in you and cause you to live. And I prophesied just as I was commanded, and there was a noise when I prophesied, and a rattling. And the bones came together, bone joining bone. And I looked, and sinews were on them, and flesh covered them, and skin spread upon them, covering them. But there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of Adam, and say to the breath, thus says Lord, my Lord Yahweh, come from the four winds, O breath, and blow on these slain, and they shall live. And I prophesied just as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they stood upon their feet, a very great army. And he said to me, Son of Adam, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Look, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off to ourselves. This is God's word. And one, not exactly general secret, but any one, one thing that, that sort of gets lost in the translation, the word for breath and spirit in Hebrew is the same word. So when it says in, in Genesis that, that, uh, God breathed into the God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Or, you know, in, the, in Genesis 1, first, first verses, you know, that uh, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. That's the word for breath. So, anyway, just thought I'd throw that. As a, as a senior professor of mine used to say, I just thought I'd throw that out for what it's worth. It's worth a lot, but anyway. But someone who is creating a sculpture, he's gonna make, he's gonna make this really nice statue. He sees this block of wood there, and, or stone, or stone, either one, He's, but he sees it not as it is, but what it will become once he's done with it. And then he proceeds to shape it in line with that idea. He removes all the other stuff that's in the way of it becoming a beautiful statue. He knows what he's doing. You know, removing all the, all the other stuff except... What makes it beautiful? He knows what he has to work with. And in, and in his vision, and in this vision, you have the creative grace and power of God at work. 
the creative grace and power of God, the Holy Spirit, are seen both in what he has to work with and what he does with it. Well, the question is, what does the Spirit have to work with? And here we have this valley of dry bones. And in, in, in Hebrew, it's like, it's like in, in, what was it? I guess the Eskimos have, I don't know how many different words for snow because they work with it and stuff like that. But here, in Hebrew, there are two words for valley. Valley is like a really thin, like this, which is like the Kidron Valley around Jerusalem, which really very, very narrow, it's very steep sides. Or up, up in Indiana, what they call a hauler. So I guess Kentucky too, but that's another story. But this is a broad valley and a big, uh, very, very large, very shallow sides. Um, but it's full of dry bones. There's a lot of them. <clears throat> and that's what Israel felt like at that time. When Ezekiel, Ezekiel is prophesying, to the people who are in exile in Babylon, who are feeling very dry and lifeless and um, sort of like cut off and without life. You know, uh, as those without life. Bones are seen as the seed of life. You know, and you remember back to Genesis, uh, the first parts of Genesis were, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper like him. How does God do that? He puts, he puts Adam into this deep sleep, and then he <coughs> takes a rib. And, you know, from Adam's side and closes up the flesh in, the, in that place. And from it, he makes kawa or eat. And modern science, you know, the bones is where, are where the, this sort of the seed of life. It's where red, red and white blood cells are come from. And they have stem cells. And it's like, that's where everything comes from. It's like stem cells. You know. So that, that is, you know, most, most certainly true. Well, these were people who had been uprooted from their land. You know, and they did, and that happened to them because of their desertion of, from God and his ways. Like we said a couple of weeks ago, that uh, in many in, in Facebook terms, they had unfriended God. God didn't unfriend them; they unfriended him, as it were. And for spiritual adultery, they had played the harlot with other gods instead of being being faithful to the true God. And now they were paying the price, and now they felt like people with, with you know like dry bones. They felt as if they were dead. The God, you know, the, like the last, the last verse here, the God had just kind of cut them loose. Now what? But as those without hope, what future was there for them? And you read Psalm 137, which is a couple back from, you know, from um, where we are here. Well, turn, turn to 137 in, in the front of your hymnal. Just look, look at, the, at this one. It's just we got it right here. So, and this is how they're feeling. I think, I think they, they should have that here, if not. They don't. <laughs> well, and there's a reason. You know, psalms are supposed to be uplifting and positive and worshipful and stuff like this. This really isn't. By the waters of Babylon, we sat. By the waters of Babylon, 
we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Kind of depressing. That's how they felt. They thought that all, the, all they had to hang on to was the past. The future was like, what, fu what future? You know, And as those with no purpose, now what was the reason for their existence? They felt like the disconnected bones and his equals vision. But God had just cut them loose. It's like I've had it up to here and I'm not going to take it anymore. And just like, you know. But that's what the Holy Spirit has to work with. People who are dry bones. Like us. How are, but how, it's how we really are by nature. And how do we get that way? Sin has sucked the life right out of us. We are born dead and dry and without the life of, without the life of God in us. It's the way it is. It's true for all the children of Adam. That's the thing this, that it says Ben Adam. It says son of Adam in there. Adam is mentioned more than you think in the Bible because sometimes, sometimes it says children of men. And, and it's the same word, but sometimes it ought to be translated children of Adam. So they knew the story. But as Christians, we are painfully aware of that, of the way things really are. Other people, you know, may not realize their spiritual condition. It's like people who, who don't know they have, they have something wrong until the doctor says, well, you've got this and you've got six months to live, you know, or uh, why aren't you dead yet? No, I'm just kidding. But, but they need to find out before it's too late. And that's where we come in. But I'm getting ahead of my story. But it's what the Holy Spirit has to work with. Dry bones, stuff like this, like this valley, like us. That's what God has to work with. And so we need God's help. Dry bones in the vision are what God has to work with. He has mercy upon these people. He says, I'm not done with you yet. It may feel like it. It may look like it. But I'm not done with you yet. Not by a long shot. And so he worked with them. As they were, where they were, spiritually, because they were helpless, just like we are. We're dead in trespasses and sins, but God comes to us, bringing us back to life, causing us to live. And so he works through an ordinary man, a Ben Adam, a, a son of Adam. Ezekiel was given God's word to speak to them, and he was directed what to say and told how and to whom this word was to be delivered. Unfortunately, like a lot of guys, he, he followed directions. He delivered God's message. He prophesied to those dry bones. He delivered that message as given without adding to it or taking away from it. The word of God as it is. He trusted that word and the one who gave it. It's grace and power. God didn't ha had no obligation to do this for these people, but he had mercy upon them and upon us. And God's will was done, his good and gracious will. And a miracle happens. Isaiah says these words, and in his vision, all of a sudden stuff starts happening. Life is restored. Dead bones without life become connected. And cover and, 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 and put together sinews, flesh, 
skin. Ezekiel didn't do it. God's word of power did it. God did it. And so the creative grace and power are also seen, you know, not only in this, but in what the Holy Spirit does with it. Brings the, all the, the bones are connected and all of a sudden they stand up and it's a great army. He puts people back together again. He puts us back in, into operational mode, as it were. Makes us alive again. Makes us live again. And the word of the living God does it. The Holy Spirit works through the means of grace, like baptism. And the proclamation of the word, like here, to bring us back to life. The word and the water. The word in with the in with the water. We were dead in trespasses and sins. The soul that sins shall die. But the but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. How cool is that? You know, the word of God's grace and forgiveness. And the one who was slain for us on the altar of the cross. Who got what we had coming. Who bore our, all of our sins in his body on the cross. He has brought us back to life. In him we live and move and have our being. Which is, anyway, that's another story. But he graciously keeps on coming to us through various means. Through people, through his word. Because we need to hear that over and over again. As I said before, we're always in therapy. We always need healing and restoration. And God is constantly at work doing that because we need it every day. And the Holy Spirit is at work to put the pieces of our broken lives back together. You know, in the right order. And I've always, you know, it's sort of like this triad. Tri puzzle that I had that I inherited from my uncle that, are, well, it's gone the way of all the earth. But, it was one of these things where you have, the, have bees and moths and stuff like that. And you can put all the pieces together, because they're all triangles. But you have to, but in order for the picture to be right, you have to figure out which one goes where. That's what God does. He puts all the pieces back in the right place, in the right order, to fulfill their proper function. So that we can love people and use things instead of the other way around that we're used to and born doing out since Adam and Eve did the, I don't know, that looks pretty good to me, I think. Which is another story, but anyway. <clears throat> but we are no longer disconnected and useless. We are alive by the Spirit's grace and power, enabled to be conveyors of his grace and power to others, to pass it on by inward deed and line. And he puts them with others. He's put back together. He gives us a future and a hope. I've got stuff for you for all to do. And they form one body, and that is the church, the body of Christ. And each one becomes an arm or a leg or a big toe. You're going, you know, how, how useful is a big toe? Try walking without one. That's why in the Old Testament, when you read the son, that, that when kings were captured by another king, sometimes they would cut off their big toe so they would just kind of have to do like this and could not walk in a dignified manner. Or stand up really straight. So big toes are important, along with every other part of your, they, every other part of your body. But he we be, he makes us into parts of his body, the church. We are connected with each other, you know, by the love of Christ, really in our new hearts. 
Luther, I, I, I don't know whether to do this, share this now or not, but Luther had this, you know, that uh, he says, even toes and stuff like that, because he says, if you stub your toe, the face puckers, the whole body bends over, the hands reach for it, and you go, you know, to do this. But your whole body's involved, even when one member suffers. So we're all interconnected. We are all connected to the source of life, and that's Jesus. It's a hope that we have for the future, Christ in us, the hope, the expectation of glory. And by his grace and power, the, the Lord and giver of life, the Holy Spirit, is at work to keep us connected to that life and that hope through the proclamation of his word, both the law and the gospel. The good news that we are sinners and the, and the, the bad news that we're sinners and the good news that God forgives us. But, and so it's a life that we share with each other and the people around us. And so he gives them a purpose. He says, he raised them up and there, it's a great army. I was doing, I was writing, copying this out last night, and it's like, and after I'm going to bed, I'm going, yeah, I have those things in reverse order. Because when you we're talking about an army, what the first thing you do is prepare physically by you know training and things like this, both physically and materially. You get stuff, you get, you get people together, and then you give them stuff to work with. God does that. He brings people together and then he gives them stuff to work with. Which is this, I mean, this is a whole sermon anyway, but we're not. Where they got one, we don't need two of them today. No, just kidding. But then when, when the preparation has been made, God has raised up this army. Now what's he going to do with it? And in, in a, sort of in Ezekiel's case, we have Daniel who became really high up in the government. And a prophet, and then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and other stuff. And so, but as he prepares it, then he moves it. He moves this army from there back to the Holy Land, back to their land, because he's got stuff for them to do. Because eventually, about 400 years down the road, or five, más o menos, he's going to bring the Messiah through them. I still got stuff for you to do. He moves us, at, you know, at the direction of the of the of the leader, and the move, the army goes where the action is, and to come to the rescue of those in need. That's what armies are supposed to do. It's both defense, offensive and defensive, and that and the arm and it fights the enemy, both offensively and defensively. God, you know, with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which we're kind of getting there. But by his grace and power, he provides the army with all that it needs. Living bodies, which you need if you're going to have an army, not just robots. Whole group of Mr. Datas. Not exactly. But living bodies and leaders, people to stand out in front and lead people and say it this way. But also a lethal weapon. We don't have one here. We got one out there someplace. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Our lethal weapon in the fight against the old evil foe. It is lethal. You hit them, you know. But it's a weapon that something that God has given to us. So he gives us what we need to work with. So the creative spirit, spirit is created. Yes, the spirit, the creative spirit, by His grace and power, has raised us up and given us life through that word, giving us both hope and a purpose. There is a reason why we are here, not just to take up space. And he continues to be at work in us. To bring about the fulfillment of both, not only in our lives, 
but in the lives of those whom he reaches through us. Amen. In the peace of God which passes all human understanding, stand in guard of your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of Christ Jesus our Lord to eternal life. Amen. Yes. Let us rise to pray, and we'll have the prayer of the church, and, and uh, that will, I will lead that into the Lord's Prayer, and then everything else, and again, we're going to read the directions, follow us here. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus. And for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Glorify his name among us in every word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Almighty God, by your spirit, you have established your holy, holy church on the proclamation of Christ our Savior. Sustain the apostolic preaching to the ends of the earth, so that in every tongue the mighty acts of God in Christ may be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, give hope to your people in the midst of this world of death and despair. Put your spirit within us to believe, to live, and to serve according to your promises and commands. Lead our homes to confess our confidence in your power to raise the dead now and at the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son acknowledged Satan as the ruler of this world and its ways, yet one whose reign is judged and whose time is short. Beat back his lies and deadly work that the order of your creation may be seen. Give us good government and leaders who are both honest and faithful. Even so, let us look eagerly for your son's return and let that be quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send now your Holy Spirit upon your faithful people that convicted of their sin, they may also be convinced that the righteousness of Christ is theirs. And in such repentance and faith, receive the things of Christ declared in his supper, his holy body and precious blood for the forgiveness of sins. Unite us by your Holy Spirit, by your spirit of truth and faith and confession and comfort us with the knowledge that this world's prince is judged. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through your Son, you <clears throat> promised your Holy Spirit who would convince the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment Enlighten our hearts so that we may confess our sins, obtain everlasting righteousness through faith in Christ, 
and through every trial and temptation, abide in the consolation that Christ is Lord over the devil, death, and all things, that he will graciously deliver us from all affliction to make us partakers of eternal salvation. To the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join our hearts in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our service continues on page 201 at the bottom. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Okay, let us pray. Grant we implore you, Almighty God, to your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes down from above that your word may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached the joy in the building up of Christ's holy people, so that, in the steadfast, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name abide to the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The last thing is 503. Um, has a, I, think, I think the tune of Norwegian. I got it. Uh, but it's kind of a, I'm not sure if you knew it is, but it's kind of a jaunty, happy, joyful thing because it says, oh, day full of grace.
excellent place where the angels is made to Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.